Welcome back gang, Todd here and we got another video today and this time we're going to take a look at both an Apple TV 4 which is the brand new model just released and an iPad mini 4 which was released about a month and a half ago. Alright let's go ahead and get our knife out let's go ahead and crack this bad boy open. For me this particular purchase was of interest because I'm upgrading off an older iPad. I have an iPad 4th generation Retina. So that was the model that came out right before the Air, the original Air came out. So I've had that one for about two and a half years now. So it was time for an upgrade. Plus it was kind of big and bulky, kind of heavy. So this should be a nice upgrade. We'll get to that a little bit later. Let's go ahead and just dispose of this plastic wrapper here. There we go. Put the box aside and here's the iPad Mini 4. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out and take a quick look over. It's wrapped in typical plastic. This is the same kind of stuff that you'll see on most Apple products nowadays. You also notice how thin it is. Um, it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, 6.1 millimeters I believe is officially how thick it is. I'll tell you what, Apple might often be imitated but they're sure as hell not duplicated when it comes to the slick packaging they put on their products. And this iPad Mini 4 is no exception. First thing I noticed taking out of the box is just how light it is in the hands. Uh, it feels sturdy, but it's very light at the same time. Let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the packaging. Of course, we have the requisite manuals, warranty information, stuff in the bone reads. We have included a lightning cable so you can charge and sync it to your computer or to the power. And we have the little wall AC adapter. You can plug your lightning cable into this, plug it on the wall, and of course juice it up that way if you don't want to hook it into a computer. This particular one is a 10 watt unit, so it provides about 2 amps at 5 volts. Let's move on. Let's go ahead and power the iPad Mini 4 for the first time. If you've set up any other modern Apple iOS devices, iPhone, iPad, uh, the experience is pretty similar. There's really not a lot different. Uh, they've added a few things into it that's different with the newer devices, uh, such as the ability to set up Apple Pay, where you take a photo of, uh, I believe it's your credit card, and then you configure the Apple Pay. That's something I've personally not done. It's something that's not a huge interest to me, but I know for some folks it might be. So we're gonna go ahead and hook this up to our Monkey Business Wi-Fi. Hey, well, we're going to go ahead and just kind of fast forward through some setup process and I'll mention anything of interest that pops up. I'll go ahead and connect this up to my Apple account. And here's the Apple Pay part where you can add a card to your Apple Pay account. Like I said earlier, that's something I've not actually used. And one of these days I might, I might set it up just for the hell of it, but so far I've not really bothered with it. One of the first things that strikes me is just how gorgeous the screen is. I know the earlier minis were um, known for having a dithered screen. They still look good, but for anybody who were serious into photography or video, um, the screen just wasn't quite at the standard because it, wasn't, it didn't, wasn't capable, I believe, of displaying the full color spectrum. So they were known for uh, having great color, but maybe not the most accurate color. So for people that were hardcore, into that stuff, it just wasn't cutting it. I'll go ahead and visit a few websites here and see how quickly it loads up over my Wi-Fi. As you can see, it's not too bad at all. We'll go ahead a few more sites. We'll hit Mac Rumors. And the scroll speed on this is fantastic too. When you're in Safari and you're scrolling up and down through websites, my older fourth generation iPad Retina um, just lags. It just chugs along. Uh, every, it seems like every uh, OS update, it just gets slightly slower and slower and slower. Okay, let's go ahead and put the iPad aside. Let's get out this case setting back here. I've actually had this now for a couple days. I originally filmed this video on Friday, uh, the day before Halloween uh, 30th, and it's actually later in the weekend where I'm doing this voiceover for the video. And this case here, this iPad Mini 4 Reversible Folio by Model which as the back of the package just says, only available Best Buy. Um, 
is okay, but I've got a couple problems with it, and mostly it comes down to the buttons on the iPad. Because of the way they're recessed on the side, it makes it kind of hard to press the buttons in this case. So you have to kind of stick your finger in there a little bit, kind of edge it in there to press them. But it's not too bad. I'll probably keep this case for a bit until I have a chance to pick up another case. At that point, I'll probably replace it with something a little nicer. One thing I noticed is it doesn't have the little mechanism built into the case where it has the ability to um, display the screen, turning the screen off and on when you open it. Uh, some of the cases, when you flip them open, the screen will automatically um, light up so you can put in your passcode or unlock it. And then when you close the case back, it sleeps the screen. I noticed this one doesn't have that ability, so that's kind of interesting. Still has a pretty lightweight even the case on the case doesn't weigh a whole lot. And actually we're gonna go ahead and get out my trusty weight scale here. I'm gonna weigh the iPad Mini 4 by itself without the case. Comes in at ten and a half ounces. And for shits and giggles, I'm gonna go ahead and put my fourth gen iPad on here. Weighing in at one pound, 7.1 ounces, it's pretty clear that the Mini 4 weighs a little less than half of the way of this guy. And also, if you look at the thickness, it's clearly a bit thinner than the 4th gen iPad. And you also notice the screen size between the two of them. Um, if you compare the two, putting the 4th gen uh, or putting the iPad Mini 4 up to the Fortune, you can see it actually is about the same, the whole unit is about the same physical size as just the screen itself, uh, the actual displayable screen portion of the Fortune. Give you an idea in comparison. So if you have one of these older iPads, if you turn it on and look at how much actual displayable area you have in the screen, that's about how big the iPad Minis are. Something else to notice is just how quickly it reads thumbprints whenever you go to unlock the device. If you have it set up with a security set up with using the thumbprint as your verification, it is lightning quick compared to the older units. Uh, if you compare this to especially the Mini 3, which they added on, which Mini 3 is pretty much just a Mini 2 with an added fingerprint reader, or if you look at the earlier iPhone models where they first introduced the fingerprint reader, this one's lightning quick at reading your thumbs. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and put this guy aside and let's move on to the Apple TV that I picked up. As you can see by the back of the box, is a 32 gigabyte model. They, this comes in both a 32 and a 64 gig flavor. Uh, I went ahead and picked the 32 gig up because to be honest, I don't plan on loading a bunch of games and applications on this. I'll probably load a few on there, uh, but mostly the media streaming services and YouTube, things like that. I don't plan on putting a bunch of games on it or storing photos or whatever else. So 32 gigabytes for this unit for me personally is more than enough. Plus the pricing difference, uh, 32 gig is $149, whereas the 64 gig, I believe is $199. Just wasn't worth it for me. Tell you the truth, filling this thing in my hand, it's solid. It has a very good weight to it. And we'll go ahead and pop this on the scale as well and see what it comes in at. Just under 15 ounces. So this guy weighs about an ounce under a pound. Um, so yeah, compared to the old Apple TVs, which were little lightweight pucks, uh, which could easily be pulled off the top of a counter uh, just by the weight of the ethernet or HDMI cables alone. This is a nice change. And compared to the iPad earlier, you can see it has pretty much the same kind of packaging, which Apple's known for is that's wraparound plastic. It's amazing actually, now think about it, how many vendors copy Apple's styling. Uh, I remember back in the day, Apple was one of the first companies that do this kind of clean packaging and now everybody else copies them, including Samsung. On the bottom, we have the Apple logo. And on the side, this one has this black plastic that you have to peel off around the edges of it, which I guess protects the glossy surface that runs around the edge of the unit. And now we get the first look of the back of the unit. If we go around the back here and take a quick look at the ports, we have on the left hand side, we have power. Uh, we have HDMI in the center and right above it we have a USB-C connector, which actually I believe that's used for some sort of diagnostics and on the right it's Ethernet. And I'll be honest, I'm actually surprised Apple puts Ethernet on this. Uh, even though for those of us who have higher quality media, we definitely appreciate the Ethernet. 
because uh, sometimes wireless Wi-Fi just doesn't cut it, but I am surprised they still put it on there. Knowing Apple, they like to re remove things. And here's the remote. This is probably my favorite part of this new um, Apple TV is the remote. Finally, Apple got off their ass and designed a remote control that had more than just one or two buttons. Weighing 1.6 ounces, when you hold this in your hand, it has a nice substantial feel to it. It doesn't feel like a little cheap, chunky uh, remote like you see with some of these media devices. Um, some of the new features it includes is at the very top of which I'm playing with in the video is this little clickable trackpad. Uh, you can see I'm sitting there playing with it, clicking it back and forth. You can swipe your finger left, right, up and down on the trackpad on the remote to navigate the menus on Apple TV. It's pretty slick. Let's get started manual. And a lightning cable. The remote control itself has a built-in rechargeable battery, so no more replaceable batteries. You just plug the lightning cable into the remote, plug it into either your computer or any Apple charger, uh, like the ones that come with an iPhone or an iPad, and boom, you're charging. Apparently you can charge it for just a couple minutes and get a couple hours worth of charge on it. This is a lot like what Apple's doing with their peripherals. They're having built-in rechargeable batteries. And you simply plug in the lightning cable to a computer or an outlet and charge it up. Uh, I think they're doing that with the Magic Trackpad 2, Magic Mouse 2, and the Magic Keyboard. So that's apparently the way Apple's moving with all these kind of devices. Well, I hope you like this brief look at both the Apple TV 4 and the iPad Mini 4. As you know, I usually don't cover these kind of things on the channel. However, since I picked these up for myself and I had them on hand, I thought maybe you guys like to take a look at things I'm interested in as well that's outside of the realm of retro computers and retro game stuff. Well, thanks guys for watching this video. You know what to do. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give me a big thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.